praise and all the glory and all the honor. Thank you once again for Thank another you. opportunity to come together, to fellowship with you, Thank to fellowship you. with one another, Thank to you. praise you, and just to have fun Thank in your presence, Lord. Lord. We just give you praise for that. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for your precious Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Father, as we study your word this morning, we thank you for revelation, knowledge yeah, flowing right. freely, unhindered, uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic spirit. We thank you, Father God, that we decrease in you and you in all of you and none of us. Thank you that you have anointed our ears to hear, our hearts to receive, and our spirit to contain your word. And I thank you, Father, thank that you, as Father we study God. your word, our minds are being renewed so that our lives will be changed. Thank you for thanking through my mind and speaking through yes, my vocal cords for all that you Lord. have me to say to these your sheep. And Father, we'll be ever so mindful to always give you always. praise. Always, always yes. give you the glory. Always. Always. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Everyone in agreement say Amen. We want to welcome our radio and internet audience to the program this morning. My name is Pastor James Anderson. And we're speaking on the subject of faith. And we're talking about we were teaching on a series that we have entitled Faith, Faith Development. Amen. We're talking about causing our faith to grow. And it's important that we do because we're living in a society where we need to be dependent upon God. Amen. Before we get started on the subject, turn with me to Psalm 27, verse 13. We've been here before, but I need to, I think it's good to go back and look at this. Psalm 27, verse 13. I'm going to show you why it's important for us to develop our faith. David said this. Okay, this is David talking. Psalm 27, verse 13. When you get there, say amen. 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 And David said, I would have lost heart or fainted unless I had believed. See, that's the key. Yeah. If you didn't believe that's right. in concerning his circumstances, he said, I gave up. Yep. I'd have quit. Uh -huh. Amen. You know what I mean? But he said, I would have lost heart, gave up, quit, unless I had believed that I would see uh -huh. the goodness of the Lord yeah. in the land of the living. Praise and God. see, and Praise see God. we live in a time where we have to believe that we will see uh -huh. the good of the Lord Amen. in the land of the living. Amen? Amen. Amen. The government, once again, is talking about shutting down. Amen. People panicking. Why? When as believers, our dependence or our trust is not in the government. Right. It's on God. Amen. They can shut the government down, but yeah. they can't shut God down. Yeah. And God is going to always provide. Oh, the yeah. government is just a resource. It's not the source. Amen. God is the source. Right. The government is a resource Amen. that he works with. And just like if that resource Shuts down. God has plenty more resources. Yes, he do. Yes, he do. Yes, he do. He can meet your needs through. Yes, he do. It's kind of like a house that uh, where you got a water hose going from your house to water the ground. Yeah. Okay, the water hose is not the source of water. There is no. The 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 the, 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 the that is hooked on to that's your source. That's right. And if that hose kink up and stop working, you just hook another hose up to it. All right. You know what I mean? <laughs> so we don't worry about the we don't worry about the source. God is the source. The government is just a resource. Amen. Amen. So, and, and I personally don't believe they're going to shut down. I think they like to play with people. You know what I mean? Yeah. That kind of stuff creates fear. Right. But see, as believers, we're do. not going to operate in fear. Yeah. We're going to operate in faith. Amen. 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 So Amen. we're not concerned with that. Mm -hmm. All right. We, like I said, we're teaching on the, on the series called Faith Development. This is volume two of the series, and we're on the third teaching of this series, which is qualities for development. We said that qualities are defined, that the word quality is defined as characteristics that distinguishes one person from another, okay? And as believers, we should possess qualities, characteristics, and behavior patterns that distinguishes us from non-Christians. Right. We shouldn't act or respond the way the world responds, all right? Mm -hmm. Now, Peter, has listed several several qualities that we're to add to our faith for development, for growth. In 2 Peter chapter 1, this is our found foundational scripture for this teaching. 2 Peter chapter 1, beginning at verse 5. When you get there, say amen. Amen. Uh oh, <laughs> I gotta hold my back up. So just give a second to say, okay, he went over. <laughs> <laughs> But 
2 Peter chapter 1, beginning at verse 5, Peter said, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence. We say giving all diligence means putting forth maximum effort. Mm -hmm. Giving it all you got. He said, for, for this very reason, give it all you got. Add to your faith. Now, when you add something to something, you cause whatever you're adding to, to grow, right. to increase, right. right? So he said, add to your faith virtue. And we said the word virtue here comes from a Greek word, arete, A-R-E-T-E. But the E at the end has an accent over it, so it gives it the A sound. And it refers to excellence, all right? And we said excellence is doing things exceptionally well. Now, the word virtue, we said that Jesus used in the gospel when he said virtue went out of his body comes from a different Greek word. It comes from dunamis. And that word means power. But this word here means excellence. All right? So he said, add to your faith excellence. All right? Then he says, add to virtue knowledge. We said knowledge is understanding or the correct insight of. It's, it's, it's the right understanding. All right? And then he said, add to knowledge, self-control. We said self-control is restraint or discipline. We have to discipline our emotions. We have to discipline our feelings. All right? Then he said, and this is the one that we've been talking about, then he said, add to self-control, perseverance. Mm -hmm. Now, we said perseverance here refers to patience and endurance. All right? Patience and endurance. We said that we're not to give in to the pressure of temptations and trials. Instead, we are to exercise perseverance, patience, and endurance, and do what is correct. In other words, we are to do whatever God's word instructs us to do and not let anything stop us. And when we don't see instant results, we're to stay in faith. We're to continually stay in faith by exercising perseverance, patience, and endurance. Everybody understand that? Yeah. All right. We said it can be discouraging sometimes to continue doing what is correct, especially when we are pressured by trials and temptations and when we are not receiving any words of thanks or seeing any tangible results. Tangible means that you can see it or put your hands on it. Mm -hmm. All right. When you don't, when, 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 when people are not patting you on the back or when people are not uh, 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 giving you your accolades, and when you don't see any visible results, sometimes you can become discouraged. Right. Okay, but the Bible encouraged us not to become discouraged. The Bible said that we're to continue, and if we don't quit, we will see results. Amen? Amen. We read uh, Hebrews 10, 35, and 36, where, he, where we're told that we're not to lose confidence, but we're to do the will of God, and we will receive the promise. We also read Galatians 6 and 9 where it says, And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart, if you don't quit. All right? Mm -hmm. God's word promised us here that if we don't quit, we will see God's promises manifested in our lives. Yeah. All right? And we said last week we ended by talking about one way of not quitting is to consider Jesus. And Duke put it up on the Amplified for us last week in Hebrews uh, 12 and 3, where it says we're to consider Jesus in comparison to what we're going through. And what we're going through does not compare to what Jesus went through. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. So if we do that, then it says we won't faint in our mind. That's where you give up at first, in your mind. See, once you lose heart, once you get to a place in your mind where you don't want to do it no more, then everything, then your body starts following your mind. Your spirit always wants to follow the word. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, remember when Jesus told Peter them the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. weak. See the spirit is always willing to follow God. The spirit is always willing to do the word but the mind if, if it's not renewed continually want to go the other way. Alright All right, so we're going to pick it up this morning by saying that if we allow ourselves to we can become discouraged thinking that maybe God has forgotten us. You ever <laughs> felt like that? You ever felt like God has forgotten you? Been there. I mean, ain't nothing. I mean, ain't nothing wrong with. It. We all been there, okay? But as we mature, we recognize in the word that He hasn't forgotten. Us. We know that He never forgets us. All right. The truth is that God never forgets us or overlooks our hard work for Him. 
The Bible tells us, however, that it is through faith and patience that we receive his promise. And even though we don't see results right away, even though things may be happening in your life and you don't see no answer to it, it's through faith and patience that you receive the answer. Amen. The answer is already provided. It ain't like God got to go try to figure out how to solve the problem. All right. All right. He's already solved the problem. He ain't trying to figure out, okay, what should I do about this? He knew the end from the beginning. Yeah, so he knew right. that the problem was going to come before we was even in existence. Right. Okay, so he pr provided for that already. Yeah, All right. Man. Turn with me to uh, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10. Hebrews 6 and 10. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. And we're going to start at verse 10. When you get there, say amen. 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 All right, it says, For God is not unjust <coughs> to forget your work and labor of love which you have shown toward his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. So what he's saying here, God hadn't forgotten you. God had forgotten the love that you've shown in his name toward other people. And you're continually doing it, meaning that you shouldn't, you shouldn't be done, you, you shouldn't have quit. You, 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 you should still be doing it even though you may not see results, is, is, is the implication here. He says, at the end, he says, uh, and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. So that means that you're still doing it. Right. Uh -huh. Okay. I hope you haven't quit doing what God has called you to do. I hope you haven't quit your ministry. I hope you haven't backed away from your ministry because of the pressure of the world or because of the flesh. He said, God hadn't forgotten you. It may look like God has forgotten you, but God hadn't forgotten you. That's the trick of the devil. The devil come and tell you, see, if God loves you, he'll, he'll be provided for you. But the truth is, he's already provided. We just have to receive it through faith and patience. Amen? Amen. Verse 11 says, and we desire that each one of you show the same diligence. They go that diligence again. To fulfill, I mean, to, to the full assurance of hope until the end. So he's saying, listen, God hadn't forgotten you, so just keep putting forth effort. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the effort that we're putting forth? The effort that we're putting forth is to believe. We're not doing the work. God is do. God does the work. All we do is believe. Uh -huh. And uh, if that's what uh, Jesus told him in John chapter 14. He said, it's not me that do the work. It's the Father that do the work. And then he goes on to say, the same thing that I do, did, so shall you do. Uh -huh. And what Jesus did, now, 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 now this is going to really shock you here. You, do you know what Jesus did? He believed. That's right. And because he believed, he got results. Mm -hmm. You see that? He said, the same thing that I do, so shall you do. He said, I didn't do the work. So Jesus wasn't doing the work. All Jesus did was believe that the work was going to be done. Mm -hmm. you, see the, you see that? So that's our job. We have to believe that God has already provided yes. for us. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, so the work that we do is to believe. Mm -hmm. And believe me, that's a lot of work. Yes, it is. It's according to the circumstances. Yes, Sometimes you have to put forth a lot of effort oh, yes, to believe. Okay? Yes, 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 yes. That's why we need, to, we need to take every opportunity that we can and study the word. Because it's through the word of God that our faith is built up. All right? Amen. Verse 12. He said, that you do not become sluggish, watch this, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Praise so we see here that the promises, now what are the promises? The promises are the answers to your situation. Yes. So whatever situation you're in, what, what, even if you are, if, even if you are uh, witnessing the people, drawing people into the kingdom, you may not see them come into the kingdom right away. But the promises of them coming into the kingdom is received through faith and patience. So even though you don't see them coming into the kingdom, you have to believe that, 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 that That's you right. did it. Praise God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Don't don't lose hope because sometimes you can go out, especially family members. Family members are some of the difficult people to witness to at times. Okay? Mm -hmm. But you have to believe that the word that you sown in their heart has taken root. Right. Right. Even though that word that you sown may not produce the fruit right away, somebody will come and water that word and God will bring the increase. Yes. Amen. So, Amen. So, so 
don't quit, don't give up, don't stop. Just exercise patience and endurance. Amen. Amen. Are y'all okay with that? Amen. Because I'm telling you, sometimes you don't see results. Sometimes even the people that you're witnessing to rebel against you. Mm -hmm. They talk about you, but you still plant that seed, that right. word. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. All right. God knows our efforts of love and ministry. God is not an unjust God. He's a good God. Yes, he is. But see, a lot of times people think that he's unjust because they uh, started to believe this lie that the devil has planted that God do bad things to us. Mm -hmm. But the Bible tells us in James that all good things, all, That's say all, right. all, all, all good things come from God. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Uh, uh, or Roberts said it like this. He made it so very simple. He said, all good things come from God, and all bad things come from the devil. Amen. If we could just keep that in mind, Amen. when bad things happen, Duke was given a testimony today by a friend of his, who, and, and we, we've all been there, when things happen to us, we kind of get upset. focus and get, and get upset with God. But Duke put him on the right track and said, what, what about the devil? Yeah. Uh, see, the devil's the one called come here to steal, kill, yeah, destroy. and destroy. Right. You understand? But as soon as something happens, because of all this religious teaching that we've been mm -hmm. uh, presented with, sometimes our thoughts go and immediately blame God. And, and, and if that happens, you know, God ain't mad with you. Mm -hmm. Just get back on the right track and recognize mm -hmm. that, hey, God, it's not you, it's the devil. That's right. You know what I mean? Because yeah. all good things come from God. Mm -hmm. Now, what God would do is take what the devil meant for bad right. and then turn it around for you good. Yeah. That's, right. That's, That's right. the kind of God would say. Right. The devil meant yeah. for it to destroy you, but God yeah. calls it to bless you. Yeah. That's right. You understand? Wow. So, so, so when you see it happening, don't panic, don't quit, don't give up. That's right. That's Just say, right. thank you, Lord, that you're going to make this work out for my good. You That's didn't right. cause it, That's right. but you're going to make it work out for my good. Amen? Amen. 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 Are y'all all right with that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. We must grow to a place where we allow God's love for us and his knowledge of our, of, of, of our service for him mm -hmm. to encourage us even when we face disappointment right. and rejection. Mm -hmm. You got to know that God loves you. Right. You got to know that he recognizes the service that you're doing for him. And in that knowledge, when you're facing disappointment, mm -hmm. when things are not going your way, you got to let that knowledge of him loving you and that knowledge of him, uh, you knowing that, 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 that he recognized your service, to encourage you. Mm -hmm. In those disappointing times, in those times of rejection, focus on him. Amen. Recognize, you know what, God, you haven't forgotten me. God, you love me. Mm -hmm. Nothing I can do can ever separate me from your love. Mm -hmm. See, once you understand that, once you understand that no situation, no circumstances can ever separate you from the love of God, Nothing won't bother you. Yeah. It may, even if it do for a little while, it won't overcome you. That's right. Do you know there's no situations that we face where God is not there? That's right. There's no situation That's that right. we face where His love is not present. That's right. His love is. I don't care how deep it is, how long it is, how wide it is, how Nothing. far it is. God is right there with you. Amen. Thank he you said, Lord. "I will never leave you nor forsake you." He said, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your yes. life. So he's wherever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're going through, he's right there with you. And the good news is he's already provided the answer for us. Yes. All we have to do is exercise our perseverance, believing, trusting in him. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen? All right. Perseverance, endurance, our patience plays a major part in the growth of our faith. Paul, in his second letter to Thessalonica, to Thessalonica, expressed to them that their patience played a vital part in the growth of their faith. Turn with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. And let's look at verses 3 and 4. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. This is Paul's letter to them. He's telling them about how their faith grows. See, faith grows. Now, I remember uh, in John, while you turn in John 17 and 3, I believe it is, the disciples, it might be 5, the, the disciples asked Jesus to increase their faith, to cause it to grow. And Jesus said, if you had the faith of a mustard seed, you would say, 
But what he did was put the responsibility of their faith growing on them. Yes. See, we've been getting in prayer lines, and I've seen them, where people get in prayer lines and I, I want you to pray that I have more faith. Mm. And the pastor say, well, more faith, more faith. He can say that all day long. Okay. And ain't no faith coming. Nothing happening. Ain't no faith growing. No. Are you hearing what I'm saying? No. You have to, you have the responsibility That's right. to cause your faith to grow. Grow, yeah. Okay. And it grows like uh, Tracy said through exercises. Yes. All right. Second Thessalonians chapter one, verse three. You have it? Yes. Amen. It says that Paul said, We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting, because your faith grows. You see that? Faith grows. Exceedingly, and the love of every one of you all abounds toward each other. Verse 4. So that we ourselves boast among the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. You know what Paul was telling them? We're boasting on you. We're bragging on you. Right. Because your faith grows, grows, and it's growing because of the patience and faith that you are applying. See, they were exercising their faith. What had happened here, Paul had went there and witnessed to them, and so many people responded, okay? And after Paul left, they were persecuted. See, a lot of times when you witness the people among heathens and some of the people respond, well, the ones that didn't respond after you leave will persecute them that did. Yep. And the purpose of that is the enemy is trying to get them to renounce what they did, right. to, to, to back away from what they right. did. You understand? But they didn't. These, Thess these Thessalonians didn't do that. They, they stood their ground, okay? And they, and they exercised faith and patience. That's why Paul was bragging on them, okay? Now, nowhere was the Thessalonians' growth in faith and love more evident than in the way they patiently endured persecution for their faithfulness in Christ. That's why they were persecuted. Not because of who they were, but because of who they believed in. And that's what you're going to be persecuted about a lot of times. The enemy is going to come against you not because of who you are, but because of whose you are. All right. Okay? And uh, I think it's 2 Timothy 3 and 12 says that those who will live God will be persecuted. Yeah. When you try to live for God, persecution is going to come. So don't yeah. take it personal is what I'm trying to tell yeah. you. It's not personal. It's that you are in the family of God, and the enemy is coming against the family of God. Amen. Amen. But we have already won. Like dude was talking about the book of Revelation, how it talks about winners, we're winners. All you got to do is see, I read the back of the book. Yes, sir. I already know the end result. We won. And it's too late. <laughs> We've already won. Yeah. We've already won. Hallelujah. We had an advantage. You can go to the back of the book and read and see the end result. Amen. And the end result is Amen. we won. Okay? We have the victory. Jesus. It's already done. Yeah. Amen. Praise Jesus. Praise God. Praise Jesus. God, God is good. God. Yes. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Forever. All right. <laughs> As Chris, well, one thing, uh, the Thessalonians' steadfast faith, or we can say their perseverance, not only strengthened them to withstand difficult circumstances, it also motivated them to express genuine love for others. Yes. When you are truly operating in faith, the foundation of that faith is going to be love. Yes. You know, you can't operate in faith without operating in love. You can't. You can be in faith. I need to rephrase that. You can be in faith, but not at its full potential mm -hmm. unless you're operating in love. Amen. First thing, and this is how you operate in love. The first thing you got to do is recognize God's love for you. Uh -huh. If you don't understand God's love for you, then, then nothing else is, is, is not going to work. Once you understand that God loves you and, and how much he loves you, then you can start to love others and your faith will start to grow in that. Everybody understand that? Amen. But you got to first recognize God's love for you. Amen. As Christians, our faith in Christ should always reach its highest point by expressing true love for God and others. Yes. It reaches its highest point by expressing true love for God and others. All right? Now, the keys to surviving persecution is given us here in this book and, and trials, and they are perseverance and faith. Remember in verse 3, he says that they endure because of their patience and faith. You have to have patience and faith working together 
And when trials and tribulations come, then with patience and faith working together, you can endure it. Yes. You won't quit. Amen. You won't back up. You won't stop. Right. You know, a lot of people have stopped doing their ministry. A lot of people have stopped coming to church. They stopped reading the Bible. They stopped fellowshipping. Mm -hmm. They just quit. Why? Mm -hmm. Because they're not operating in faith. And the reason why they're not operating in faith is they're not standing in the Word. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, I won't say that. Okay. Continued faith and perseverance in the midst of trouble situations brings about victory and provides a testimony for Christ. See, not only will you, will you come out on top, but you're going to have a testimony that's going to help somebody else. And that's the key to it. The Bible says in Revelation that we, we overcame the, uh, the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And when you when you receive the victory that God has already provided, you'll, you'll have a testimony to give. And your testimony will help somebody else. Well, there's somebody else going through the same thing that you just went through. Mm -hmm. Understand that. Amen. So if you quit, then you won't have a testimony to give to them. Amen. It's up a quitting testimony. <laughs> a quitting testimony. A testimony where you quit. Perseverance is a major factor in the development of our faith. If you want to, if you want your faith to grow, if you want your faith to be developed, you have to exercise perseverance. Perseverance is patience and endurance. You have to put up with, I like uh, the Phillips translation for Hebrews 6 and 12 where it says we receive the promises of God through faith and patience. Well, the Phillips translation says that we receive the promises of God through faith patiently applied. I like that. Faith patiently applied. That means that you're, you're continually applying your faith. You're continually trusting God even when things don't look right. Even when things are not going right. Even when things are not going your way, you haven't stopped applying your faith. That's why I like that. It's faith, he don't, he don't have the, he, uh, the Philip does, does not put faith and patience as two separate entities. It puts it as one. It just says faith patiently applied. I like that. Amen. Y'all all right with that? So, I mean, so I want to encourage you. Don't quit. Don't give up. No matter what it looks like. God has already won for us. Go to the back of the book, Revelation, and read the back of the book, and you'll see that you already won. Amen. Amen. Father God, we just give you praise and honor. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you that each and every day, Father, that we're growing in our relationship with you. Each and every day, we're, we're developing in our faith walk with you, and we just give you praise. Thank you. thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. But most of all, Father, we thank you for your love, because it's your love that has produced all these things for us. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Everyone in agreement, say amen. amen. Once again, we want to thank our radio and internet audience for joining us. I'm Pastor James Anderson here at Faith International Christian Center. We're located in Braden, Florida. If you're ever in the area, we would love for you to stop by and join us. We're at 7409 Manatee Avenue West. Or if you need to contact us, you can do it by phone at area code 941-794-1713 or by the internet at www.ficcwordchurch.org. We would love to hear from you. Amen.